Something that's really interesting and rather unique about No Man's Sky is that it's one of the very few titles that consistently gets brought up whenever a new game comes out and has a rough launch for whatever reason, whether it's like lack of content or bugs or poor performance, whatever really. Whenever that happens to a new title, you'll often hear people say, hey, maybe they can pull off a No Man's Sky. And when they say that, they're referring to the fact that despite having a rough launch at Skelf, uh, no Man's Sky has managed to turn things around. Since it released in 2016, they have had over six years of regular updates, adding new content, systems, and features all for free. And we're talking like expansion levels worth of content, over 20 named updates with a ton of changes and additions at no extra cost. To the point where today, a lot of people genuinely consider this a great game. Like No Man's Sky in 2022 is in a much better spot and delivers a much better experience than it did when it first released. At the same time though, there is a lot to parse. Whether you are a brand new player or you used to play and you're looking to jump back in, there's a lot going on with No Man's Sky. And it's actually for that reason that I've partnered today with Hello Games. They are sponsoring this video as I'll be putting together basically like an introduction to ease people into the game and help them figure out if it's something that they're interested in checking out. I'm basically gonna be telling you about No Man's Sky, everything they, they added over time and let you decide if you would be interested in trying it for yourself. So yes, if you've ever considered jumping back into the game but aren't sure if it's worth it or what to do or where to start, hopefully this video will help you out. And yeah, let's just uh, dive right into it. So at its core, if you aren't aware, No Man's Sky is really a survival crafting game. You'll be spending much of your time exploring and gathering resources, which you use to fuel, craft, and upgrade your gear, your vehicles, and of course, your spaceships. All of that on the backdrop of you are out in space exploring, visiting planets, jumping between systems, encountering and dealing with various uh, alien life forms as well as space pirates, and of course also following a story. Now when you begin your very first playthrough, you do spawn in on a random planet somewhere out in the universe, and you have broken equipment and a crashed nearby ship. And then the game guides you towards seeking out the resources necessary to repair your ship and to build up the basic tools needed needed to begin your journey. The start is all pretty straightforward as the game's revamped tutorial kind of walks you through every step. And then after repairing your ship, you're able to take off, leaving the planet and setting out into space for the first time. From there, the game guides you through some more of the basics. You get an introduction to base building, to space stations, and then you are given the items needed to repair your hyperdrive, which enables warp speed jumps between neighboring systems. And it's here, after a few more steps uh, in the main quest line, where the game really opens up, but it's also where people kind of start to feel lost. As mentioned earlier, after all of these years and all this time, um, things have changed quite a bit. And so now what I wanna do is take you through some of the highlights of every major No Man's Sky update, touching on what it brought to the game, because it is really this variation that has added so much depth and and this will give you an idea of what's in the game and then if you think any of it's cool maybe that's just what you go towards that's what you work on um just doing basically. So the very first update was Foundation and this introduced base building to the game, letting you claim your very own base that was abandoned on any planet and you had the ability to expand and customize these. They also added a farming system where you could grow and harvest crops. They introduced freighters, which are these bases of operation out in space. They're not only massive spaceship ships that acts as like extra storage and other means of travel, but they also allow you to send out followers on various missions for rewards. And they introduced two additional game modes, creative mode, if you're looking for no challenge, just to explore and build, and survival mode, if you want more of a challenge with more hazards, a smaller inventory, and increased costs. The second update, Pathfinder, brought a total visual overhaul, textures, lighting, post-processing, other effects. This was actually the first of many visual passes the game would get. They also added ship specializations and classes, so there's different types of ships that are stronger and weaker at all sorts of things. There are new vehicles, 
vehicle. It's called Exocraft. These provide extra storage and then a better means of traveling while on a planet. They also added multi-tool specialization and classes as well as various modes. And they introduced permadeath mode, which is kind of like survival, but you only have one life. The Atlas Rises update introduced an entire new storyline. It's actually about 30 hours worth of story content. They added additional worlds and increased the variety of planetary biomes and added exotic planets as you get closer to the galactic core. They also introduced crashed freighters. This is just kind of another thing that you can see on planets. You'll find these all over the place. They can be scavenged for resources and they added a mission system. These are basically your side quest. They have tasks for you to complete for rewards and standing. Then there was No Man's Sky Next. This is a huge one where they added full on multiplayer. Yes, No Man's Sky has actual real multiplayer. You can do just about everything with your friends. They also introduced weekly community events. They opened up the ability to build a base anywhere on any planet. And they also added third person mode for both foot and ship. With that, they also introduced appearance customization. This is huge for me as it's actually the primary way I play the game. I like third person way more than first person. There was the Abyss update, which is focused on underwater stuff, added new aquatic environments and variety. Visions added new planetary biomes, creatures, planetary diversity, as well as an archaeology system, another activity for you to do. Beyond improved and expanded upon the multiplayer. They let you play with more people, added ambient multiplayer so you could randomly encounter other real players while exploring. They also transformed the space anomaly into a brand new social hub. So it's got like quest and research and stuff there, but it's also like you'll see just see a ton of other people whenever you visit the space anomaly. And there were many, many more updates. Uh, Synthesis was uh, focused on starship upgrades and a bunch of quality of life stuff. They added living ships, these like biological ships to the game. There was the Exomech update, which added fully controllable mech walkers. Desolation, this is like the dead space update where they introduced haunted derelict freighters. These would be floating adrift in space and you can go and just explore them for rewards. The Origins update brought a big expansion to the game's universe with a ton more variety. There was the Companions update, which is a pet system. Expeditions, which is a brand new game mode, offering a unique set of challenges. Prisms was a big visual overhaul update. Frontiers added alien settlements to discover and commandeer. The Sentinel update overhauled the game's main enemy faction, the Sentinels, with new types. Then there was Outlaws. This is a piracy focus update, which introduced outlaw systems, the ability to recruit a squadron, as well as capes. They added capes for you to wear. I like capes. <laughs> then Endurance update focused on improvements in addition to the freighter system. And finally, the Waypoint update overhauled many of the fundamental elements of gameplay, including the game modes, inventory size and usability, milestones, journey cataloging, and more. So as you can see, while when the game first launched, the criticism was, okay, I just collect resources and make my way to the center of the galaxy. There is a lot more diversity. There's a lot more going on. There's just a a lot more of No Man's Sky in the game right now. And there's a lot more to work towards. You make your way through that main story quest line, you get to the point where you're traveling through the systems, and then you can kind of just engage with whatever type of content you want. Check out any of the stuff that they added to the game at that point, and really just play it as a, yes, survival crafting game, but also, like I said, as an exploration game. Just explore, just do stuff, see stuff. Whatever, the universe is your oyster. <laughs> and that really would be my biggest suggestion. If you ever feel lost in this game, like I said, just pick a direction. Really doesn't matter what you wanna do. Focus on doing whatever you find most enjoyable. Like if you like flying your ship, start looking for various component upgrades to make ship flying better or saving up money so that then you can buy new ships, higher class ships and purchase your ship upgrades. If you like base building, work towards the tech advancements, unlocking new types of bases, new systems, make the biggest base of your dream. If you like the combat, focus on your multi-tool, improve the multi-tool, get better blasters, get different types of attacks, and then go out there and engage with some of those uh, sentinel locations, those sentinel nests around the planets. If you like exploring the systems, well, focus on your ship as well, or maybe improve your freighter. There's just so much more to do in the game. Now, if you do decide to check out No Man's Sky, I also wanted to, with this video, give you just some basic introductory tips. There's a whole lot of real detailed, real granular tips from people who have played 
played this game for six years straight, I want to give you like a nice introduction to kind of ease you into the game. So from the very beginning, as we mentioned with all those updates, there have been a lot of different modes added. Besides the normal base original experience, they added relaxed mode, creative mode, survival, the community expeditions, as well as custom games where you can basically just make the game out to whatever parameters you want. As a brand new player, or even as a returning player, I would just suggest going with normal to start. I kind of feel like this is like the way the game was meant to be played. It is that kind of experience. So while the game's tutorial does take you through some of the key components, there's also a lot of stuff that it doesn't really tell you directly that I want to touch on here. So your very first step will be to fix your scanner. You need 75 ferrite dust from this, which you'll find from any of the rocks located in the environment. And once that is fixed, you were then able to highlight certain nearby valuable resources. The game tells you to collect some sodium, which is the yellow NA, but you should also really gather pretty much everything else that shows up when you scan. Grab the blue dihydrogen, grab the red oxygen. You're going to need plenty of this as you continue to progress. In fact, I would suggest uh, getting just about every resource you see around you. Specifically, though, you should focus on getting a lot of ferrite dust from those rocks, as well as a lot of carbon. This will come from like plants and trees, but really just get everything that you see early on. It's nice to have a nice little early game stockpile. And then early on, your mining beam, I should mention, it'll be fairly weak. But one nice little tip is that the closer it gets to overheating, the stronger and faster it becomes. To gather quickly, you want to try to keep it as close to red without fully maxing it out because then it will overheat and go on a cooldown. Really, I just pay attention to the overheat bar that shows up in the center of the screen. Once that gets close, just let off the throttle a bit, but this is going to make mining much quicker and easier. And one thing they don't tell you soon enough, in my opinion, is to build your analysis visor as soon as possible. This is a massive help early on. Holding down the visor gives you a detailed heads up display, shows you the location of valuable resources, items, buildings, and even where your ship is, which is kind of important on your first planet when you're just starting because you might find yourself lost. The visor can also be used to scan, which is a nice good uh, money making tool early on, but especially once you upgrade it, which we'll get to shortly. So how do you get a visor? Well, in order to build it, just open your inventory, go to the multi tool, click on one of the empty spaces, then select analysis visor. It'll be right there. And then to repair it, you just need to make a carbon nanotube. So click on another spot in your inventory, get the resources, which is 50 carbon, make the tube, and then you're able to construct your visor and you are good to go. So you've got your visor, you've gathered a bunch of resources. At this point, just keep following the main story quest. The prompts will show up on the bottom right. They tell you what to do. It takes you through the various steps of building up your tools, repairing your ship and leaving the first planet. And then it goes through building your very first base and eventually making your way to the first uh, space station. Uh, some helpful tips to keep in mind while you're going through this whole process like while exploring it's good to know about the jetpack dash when you sprint you can then also melee and immediately jetpack after this propels you forward and gives you a real nice boost of speed although you do have a pretty low amount of reserves for your jetpack early on so you should keep an out for these blue flowers they give you 10 seconds of free unlimited boost they're nice to use you'll notice those by scanning they'll show up on your hud uh, also keep an out for any boxes and containers you come across you should just loot any one of them. You'll see like clusters of the red, the yellow, and green boxes. You'll also notice things like these crashed pods and buried containers. Open absolutely everything. They contain resources and items you need. They can have some really good upgrades as well, some high valuable resources, so definitely grab them. And then also, if you find any maps, use those as they will reveal specific points of interest on any planet that you're on, and those are all almost always worth visiting. And then also, once you finally make your way out into space, if you happen to come across any asteroid fields harvest them for a bit because they have some resources that are specific to asteroid fields that you're gonna need so just shoot a bunch of these space rocks and get whatever comes out of it now it really doesn't matter whether or not you want to min max things in this game you are going to want to know how to make money so there's a couple of things to keep in mind so you're going to want to focus on gathering the two main currencies which are units and nanites now both of these will help you tremendously in your path to progress all of your upgrades your gear your ships and you're going to need to do this stuff early on when you're first getting started if you happen to come across any caves one nice little early money making tip is to gather cobalt from these rock formations inside beyond that some other good quick money tips include buried technology modules you will spot these with your visor they're the symbol that looks like a wi-fi icon inside of them you will find salvage data now you use this for research unlocks like for doing things like base construction a nice little tip is they can also be sold for a ton of money early on so gather some of these if you need some quick credits basically then also sentinels it, while you're out 
exploring, if you happen to come across one of these flying little robots, they're called Sentinels. They're like basically the universe's security force. They're pretty much your main foe for a lot of the game. And if you're causing trouble on a planet, you go somewhere you're not supposed to be or whatever, collect some protected resource, they might start showing up. And they're also great for farming money. So attacking one of them is going to give you like a wanted level, kind of like GTA style. And the result of this is reinforcements show up. And now typically this will begin with a few rounds of the of these like rounded attack drones. They're going to be some of the smaller healing drones. And then one of these pyramid shaped ones. Now the pyramid ones, they're basically summoners and they periodically call in additional support. So what you can actually do is focus on attacking the healers and then the attackers, but leave the pyramid summoner alone because if you kill him, it will raise your level. But if you don't, it'll keep it where it is and you can keep farming the healers, but specifically the attackers, those rounded chunkier ones as they drop these green canisters that contain very valuable items that you can sell for a ton of units as well as a ton of nanites. It's it's honestly fantastic. You can also turn some of these into some upgrades, but um, mostly it's good for the currency. If we're talking like big long-term making money or midterm making money, you want to look into things like ship scrapping. You'll basically find and claim ships and then bring them to a station and scrap them. And then also just farming and processing is really like the long-term money-making automated kind of thing that you'll get into. But that's that's a little bit above this like beginner introduction. A uh, one really good beginner tip though is upgrade your scanner, that visor. You want to look for S tier. Those are the yellow upgrades that you'll find from the vendors in the space station. And these will grant you multiple thousands percent increase in currency reward from scanning. It is a massive boost to early game money making. Get that and start scanning stuff. And also don't forget you can upload in the discoveries tab, upload what you scan to get nanites. Okay. So those are some beginner tips. Once you're going through the story, you keep on going, you keep progressing the main story, you will slowly begin to unlock a lot of side branching paths, basically cover some of the major story updates that came through these years of content. And like I said, what you do at that point is really up to you. There are a lot of ways to progress. There are a lot of things that you can focus on from there. And that is really, I guess, the, the, the real cool thing about all these years of updates that they brought to the game. They just kept on making the game better and better better over time. And with that, I think we will pretty much wrap up this video. Hopefully this was a um, good introduction to the game, a good overview of the game. I think especially for new players, but even for returning players, like if you're someone who pay played at launch, but haven't touched the game in the time since, it's way different at this point. It is almost, it might as well be a completely different game. A, a lot has changed. That does it for today. Thank you as always for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. Take it easy.